oversight and uh, lack of regulation as a contributor. I guess my question is, is poor oversight from who? Is well, it the state, EPA, you know, your office plays a role in this. Well, certainly, um, as, you, as you are aware, the Kingston facility was licensed or permitted as a landfill. Um, there's a question about how um, adequate uh, that regulation was. Uh, there's also a question, and I believe Mr. Walsh. So, who, who uh, in regard to the regulation, whose fault is that? Well, I don't necessarily uh, want to pin fault, but I would but say. But that's your job. Well, TDEC certainly was the regulating authority, and the question would be whether there should be other reg regulators on these types of facilities. And certainly if they were regulated as dam structures, as I believe both Mr. Walton and Mr. Almas would recommend, there would have been more strenuous examination. If that had been done in this case, I am reliably told by Mr. Almas from Marshall Miller that it is possible that the Kingston spill would not have occurred. Okay, so EPA was doing their job. Well, I don't know what EPA's jurisdiction would have been over a landfill at the time. Okay. And you mentioned that uh, uh, lack of regulation. Was it lack of regulation or just failure to enforce the current regulation? And I think that's important. And I'm not, I don't know. I mean, I really, I mean, that's why we're asking these questions, you know. My observation, sir, would be uh, that even strict regulation of a landfill, when you have the combined geotechnical forces that were at work here, would not have been sufficient. Okay, very good. Uh, Mr. Kilgore, what steps is TVA taking to ensure that this doesn't happen at the other coal ash storage facilities? In particular, I know TVA utilizes wet ash storage at other sites, some of which are no longer in operation. While TVA is proposing to close the five operational wet coal ash disposal sites, what's TVA proposing to do with those sites that are no longer in operation? We have one of those sites, sir, at the uh, Watts Bar Fossil Plant. We have contained it. Um, the other five sites that are wet storage besides Kingston, we're moving forward with a plan to take all of those to dry storage. And so we're going that way. What we've done in the last six months is with Stantex identification, they walked down all the facilities, they identified initial issues that we needed to correct. We've hauled about 82,000 tons of rock to shore up various places. We've cleaned out vegetation so that the inspectors can see better. But I think the most important thing is we've gotten a lot more intrusive. In other words, instead of doing visual investigations, we've drilled holes. Stantec has gone out there much like uh, AECOM did on the failed facility and drilled in these dams to ascertain what's underground so that they know what's underground. Uh, that gives us some more comfort, but we will not be comforted until we know exactly what's down there and we take all the remedial actions. We've tried to unstop uh, all of the drains to make sure the drains are properly operating, to backfill, as I said, with stone. We put piezometers down, about 250 piezometers in these 10 other sites so that we can see movement and see water. Very good. One final question, Mr. Walton, real quick. The, the, uh, when you all were, were contacted, you know, to look into this and figure out what was, what was going on, uh, the root cause, um, were you just asked to do the, the technical aspects of it, or did you get into the corporate culture and things like that? Uh, were you asked to do both? or No. Uh, our role was the technical review of the root cause for failure, the cause, the location, and explaining the failure mechanism. Okay. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Griffith. Turn your mic on. Uh, Mr. Eric Schaefer. Eric what? Schaefer. The EPA uh, that uh, initiated a report 
uh, in two oh, 2002 that has just been released in 2009 that demonstrates the uh, carcinogenic effect of uh, coal ash combustion material from coal. Are you familiar with that release in 2009? I'm not specifically familiar with it. Okay, that. let me tell you a little bit about it. In 1775, a year before 1776,